Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. As always, I'm Callum, and thankfully with me, as always, is Scott. Hey, how are we doing? I'm very well, man. How are you? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm good. I'm good. Good man. It's uh, very happy for it to suddenly be the season <laughs> to be spooky. Yeah. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the ones I tend to enjoy more. Mm. Less so the trick or treating, but certainly the uh, yeah, build yeah, up. Miserable <laughs> bastard. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, we might have to change it now with the Littlands, but uh, yes, you will yeah. have to. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it's going to be. A bit, you've been good otherwise. Good week. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, it's been all right. Um, the the main issue has been trying to find some fucking fuel. That's <laughs> yeah. been the main issue. Well, let's the, be honest. Well, no, the main the main issue has been oh the human you know mankind oh, again. That as that, well. That's the issue. The petrol's yeah. been fine. Well, it's just all the dickheads panicking. That's been the uh, to to quote problem. Dwight Schrute, <laughs> there needs to be a plague. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we had one. Well, apparently, it just didn't take enough people. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we need a rapture then. A rapture. Yeah, yeah, we need exactly. to take a rap. We need a rapture. Exactly. Leave yeah. us all behind. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, yeah. Just. Uh, just to jump uh, jump in with the announcements. Um, yeah, go for it. As you guys know, we are recording in a brand new purpose-built studio. Um, and uh, on that note, a word from the sponsors. Indeed. <laughs> uh, this podcast is recorded and sponsored by Hellfire Studio, the first podcast film and photography studio situated here in Essex. We are roughly 45 minutes outside of London. Uh, Hellfire Studio also offers full creative content creation. <laughs> Easy for me to say. <laughs> Put your tape back in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So visit hellfirecreative.com for more info. Now, as a listener of Cryptid Ramblers podcast, uh, you guys can also take advantage of our 20% discount code for podcast, video, and photography services here at Hellfire Studio. Simply use the code CRYPTID at the uh, checkout and uh, go to hellfirestudio.uk so use that. Indeed. And uh, that is one of many benefits that you get from, uh, from, from, being, from being a fan. <laughs> just being a listener. So you see the sort of things we bring to you. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Um, and, uh, and speaking of uh, fans, um, as always, love to give a, a shout out to uh, Justin. Thank you very man. much. Cheers, man. Our uh, amazing uh, Patreon. Um, so again, thank you f- as always for the uh, continued support. And uh, remember, guys, anyone can join and uh, be a part of this uh, exclusive club. Indeed. (laughs) And uh, we have two tiers to pick from. So you've got um, a couple of options, um, should you choose. Just head to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast. Easy as that. Made it pretty easy for you. So uh, no excuses. (laughs) So come come and support your favorite podcast, guys. Absolutely. Um, Now turning our... Attentions to uh, the episode that we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, we are essentially picking up where we left off last time. Um, so for anyone that did uh, listen, obviously the last episode, which is obviously or has gained quite a lot of traction. Mm. So um, yeah. thank you to everyone who has listened so far. We've still listened and shared it as well. Yeah, absolutely. We're still amazed by you know the numbers, and you know we've noticed that the interactions we've with listeners has, has picked up, um, mm. you know, a couple of conversations, especially with uh, with Michael on on Facebook. That's right, yeah. So yeah, cheers, man. Thanks for yeah. the uh, little the shout out to you there, bud. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and also a couple of people on, um, on on Twitter as well that have listened. So um, excellent. Yeah, quite a good uh, yeah sort of exchange with uh, a couple of people um, last night actually, which was um, which was quite good. So yeah, just thanks for the uh, interactions. It's kind of mostly what we like to like yeah, to do spot on. um now it, the keen uh the keen listener would have um sort of picked up that uh for the first time in a while we actually mentioned <laughs> at the yeah. end of the last episode figures we've been meaning to do that at the end of every episode <laughs> exactly. for, the, for the past couple yeah for the past few i mean I, I think we said last time the excuse was hellier wasn't it that's right we yeah didn't, um well, we, we knew it was going to be you know in sort of a, a few parts so we we yeah, didn't feel the need to kind of mention it. Next but, week, uh, hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and just for a change, hell, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyone that, uh, that did uh, listen, um, you would know that, uh, yeah, keeping sort of in theme with uh, with the mermaids, um, we are going to be diving into the mythology surrounding nymphs and sirens. Mm. Um, now, if like us, you know, you thought that they were one of the same, then... 
yeah, I guess you could be forgiven for that. Yeah. Um, for you know, for the most part. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess what we'll do is we'll jump into the origins. Yeah, go I for guess it, of yeah. um, I guess well, yeah, of both. Well, seeing as we're you know the, the sirens predominantly by this day they are half woman half fish you know that's right typically yeah. a mermaid like you like you said yeah but exactly right obviously their origins were were far different um yeah, absolutely. so the sirens were believed to look like a combination of women and birds and yeah <laughs> to follow on from what you said in the last episode did, yeah. they are weird they are very weird if you it, look at the <laughs> if, if you because uh, interestingly like literally there's been no there hasn't really been many descriptions of what sirens actually looked like mm. the depictions of them were actually seen in very early like wood carvings and um like porcelain paintings and that kind of yeah. thing so there wasn't any literary description um of what they looked like but yes yeah, as, as you rightly say we alluded to the fact in the last episode um that it was basically the body of a, a bird with the oversized head of a woman <laughs> and, and that was yeah and what? that was what a siren was um was was believed uh was believed to be um yeah it, it, as you say they they again originated in, in greek mythology um they were actually considered to be dangerous creatures um much like mermaids they mm. would use their their song and enchanting music to you know lure sailors yeah to basically shipwreck um, mm. They would pull them into the shore. I have them jumping off the ships. Yeah, basically, yeah. Which was kind of yeah similar to the the mermaids. Mm. Wasn't it? They, they the the idea was to kind of shipwreck the the yeah, the, the the vessels and drown the uh, the sailors. And which this is, is very much the same kind of ilk, really. Which is kind of interesting because I didn't really find anything about mermaids that predated sirens. No, these were the the sort of the OGs, yeah. if you like, um, and yeah, I think that as we've mentioned <laughs> uh, a fair few times, um, it's thanks to you know good old Christianity oh, yeah. um, f- um, for essentially um, kind of discouraging any pagan beliefs mm. um, because it was around the fourth century um, that that sort of pagans or anyone that believed in in that sort of thing. Um, yeah, still very much believed in in sirens and the the whole law, you mm. know, surrounding them. Um, but yeah, as always, as it seems, uh, Christianity came in and sort of discouraged belief in any anything of that kind of nature. Mm. Um, they recruited Mrs. Boucher, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the devil. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so no, you're right. They they were the the sort of the. The OGs, and it was actually the um, sort of Christian, and, and then I think later Roman influence um, mm. that, as, as we discussed in the last episode, kind of changed them from, you know, sort of predominantly bird and and, yeah. and sort of woman to seventh century, half and half. Seventh yeah. century is what I found. It right, was okay. um, Anglo Latin yeah. Latin uh, Anglo Latin catalogue, the right. Libra Monstrorum, Monstrorum. I believe that's how it's pronounced probably right, not probably not yeah but uh, yeah that's that's when it says that the sirens the were only. women with uh, from their heads to the navels um yeah. instead of uh legs they had fish tails yeah so from the seventh century that's when right um, the romans at the very least i would guess the, yeah. the, the well no the romans wouldn't have even existed then what was left of the romans what was anyway? left, I think. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah they're on their way out i think yeah. at this point but um but no, yeah, but I think it's one of those things. I, I think we mentioned it last time. You know, I think you can almost be thankful in a way that the that Christianity did kind of forcibly change it. Because honestly, mm. when you see these sculptures, I know you have, and we'll, we'll share a picture on the um, the socials. But when you when you see what the siren <laughs> yeah. had been thought of, um, it, it is just weird. It is just the you know over well, I say oversized. It was just a, a kind of normal sized woman's head. Yeah. Chucked onto the chucked onto a bird. body of like a sparrow or something. It's, uh, it's got a, so maybe it kind of looked like something that maybe a Japanese sailor might have created. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah. If they were going to try it, that's what they would. Uh, yeah, that's what and they, they would didn't do. Didn't use a monkey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, they certainly didn't. No, they certainly didn't. Um, but uh, 
but yeah so the interestingly i th- found that the the name or the word siren um is believed to mean um to bind or tie up um Ooh, and that was kinky. um well yeah, exactly yeah and that was attributed uh, or linked to to this sort of particular creature um because they would bind people to their song and to their their music oh, okay. and their singing that makes sense um and yeah, basically lead them to their doom. So it was the whole binding, um, sort of capturing, I guess, that, that is, which is where the the original meaning or reason why that word was was mm. picked. Um, as, as everyone should probably know, the English word siren basically refers to a loud noise making device. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was derived from the Greek word siren. Gotcha. So because they obviously would sing. Make a loud noise, so lure you, people to the one them. thing that I did see, and you probably came across this as well with the yeah. old uh, SCPs and all that, the old right, creepy yeah, pastas. Yeah, yeah. You come across Siren Head. I have. Head. I've seen. <laughs> what the I've, hell is that? I've, have you seen the game? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the platform game. Yeah, that is weird. It's kind of, if, if anyone who hasn't seen, it, if you kind of imagine, I don't know, kind of like Slender Man w- w- with a siren on his head. Like a loudspeaker, yeah. sort of thing. I don't, yeah. It's just, it's yeah. The, it, the things that people come it's up not with. T- it's not, it's not, it's not terrifying or anything like that. But it's just really, really weird. It, yeah, it's it's very weird. Um, yeah, very weird. But um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but 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 also yeah, feeding off that as as we said, the the original depiction um, in Greek art mm-hmm. um, was that it was the the body of a bird with the giant head of a woman. Um, uh, later, that did become the image of um, just a woman with bird legs. That was a, a sort of a later depiction. A little bit less um, weird. A little less weird, yeah. Um, and yeah, sometimes they would have wings, sometimes they wouldn't. Um, but they would al- almost always be shown playing a instrument of, of some sort, mm. uh, which was, again, part of their whole luring um, sort of technique. So yeah, as, as we've said, uh, it was more in art itself um, that they were kind of depicted that it wasn't until much much later on that there were um sort of literary mentions mm. but even then i don't think they were described i think it was more they more played on the 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 law around their um kind of mannerisms like yeah. uh, you know, luring sailors and well, causing shipwrecks that kind of thing apparently one of the first times that um they come up in a, in a literary mm. sort of sense was by ovid which was the roman poet um, yep. who lived uh, 43 BC to 17 AD, yep. so about 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Um, the sirens were the companions of the young Persephone, that's right, which was yep. the daughter of Demeter. Yeah. Um, and the Demeter gave... Of harvest. That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and Demeter gave them wings in, to search yep. for Persephone when she was abducted by Hades. That's right, yeah. Well, that's one of the stories. Mm. The other, the alternative, is that Demeter cursed the sirens, yeah. the, the companions of, of Persephone, yeah. um, for failing to intervene. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And supposedly the, fa- the the sirens were fated to live until only until the mortals who heard their song were able to pass them. Mm. So yeah. with a little story that comes across later on, it might be a reason as to why there's no further continuation of sirens or maybe why they morphed into what we know as mermaids yeah. now. Exactly, yeah. No, that's interesting. Also, um, and in terms of timelines, I don't know how, how sort of soon, but I know um, Leonardo da Vinci um, also um, yeah. mentioned them in some of his uh, writings. Um, and he he believed in them for the most part, uh, but he believed that sirens would sing so sweetly it would um, lull sailors to sleep. They would then climb on board and kill them. And that was that was his belief right. that, that in terms of like their their purpose, and that's really I think that was found in one of his journals. So I don't think he went into too much kind of detail. With it's interesting, though, isn't it? Like all these creatures, like what would be their purpose for yeah. for killing humans? Like I don't know. I mean, some people. I mean, I, I don't know with this type of thing. I'd, I'd believe that maybe some creatures are just cursed. Like their their existence is mm. just to bring about you know doom or you know misfortune, you know death. You know they just i don't know well but i mean but for instance i mean harking back to previous content i can understand why the pygmies might have a little bit of an issue with storks 
you know, <laughs> or, or do you have a way around? You know, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. understand that because there's the documented great war, the great yeah. the great pygmy stork war. You know, that we all know about obviously, of course, yeah. and we, you all know about it now. Yeah, and you do, yeah. You're welcome. Yes, you are very welcome. <laughs> Free of charge as well. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like that, that, you can understand that, but yeah, like I, I don't know. I think is is it because just humans are ta- have taken over that these creatures possibly may have actually existed and we've just pushed them down i don't know without getting too kind of like i don't know would even be controversial i don't know but it's a i think it would probably be a controlling thing where like culling the population sort of thing well not even so much that but more so why it's believed that they had this purpose Hmm. you know was it to scare scare people from going into the water and you know, sort of venturing out because you know it was only really pirates and and people like Columbus and stuff that would sail, yeah, you know, great distances. But and that was because they were, you know were employed to sort of do so. Do so you think it was like a again a controlling thing through religion or through some sure. sort of control yeah, device so, to, yeah. to implement, and not just with these, but with with most like of scary the stories to tell your kids. That yeah, sort of thing. exactly. Yeah, to sort it's of put them off going into the water or you know that kind of thing. So was it really? So, you know, did they have, uh, you know, sort of an innocent origin, but it was twisted yeah. to sort of mean something well, else? I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's possibly. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci, that one did surprise me, to be honest, yeah. because he was considered a heretic because of his yeah. pursuits of science yeah. and things like this. It's just another big name that you wouldn't necessarily expect mm. to attribute to this type of thing, but add it, uh, sorry, uh, give it some sort of credibility, I mm. guess, really, for someone of his intelligence to you know reference it and seemingly believe in it yeah it's, you know i mean i know a lot of these geniuses did go nuts before they died so could, could it <laughs> yeah. have been a, so that might lend itself to that but yeah, they um, knew too much exactly yeah um so yeah i don't know i because again the same with like you know with with mermaids from a lot of the literary mentions and you know with these guys as well they had like a, it was always like a, a loving, nurturing, um, kind of musical mm. um, uh, sort of mention um, or or intention. And it only seems to be when other cultures got involved or, you know, certain cultures got involved. Yeah. That it gave it this spin of being about death and being tricked and, you know, lured into the That's water a- and drowned and shipwrecked. And so... I kind of think, you know, was it to, you know, stop so many people kind of basically exploring, finding new yeah. worlds and stuff because... Keep they, their field of view very narrow. It, yeah, exactly. And they mm. wanted to keep a lot of that exploring for themselves or whatever. I, I, I don't know. It, it seems to... There always seems to be a shift, doesn't there? Yeah. Something sets out with a good intention and then, and then something, something gets influenced over. and then bam, it then, it then you know, sort yeah, of changes. Yeah, exactly it. Um, and it, yeah, I mean, you're know, talking about other you know, sort of iterations just quickly, uh, mm. the sirens sp- uh, specifically, um, uh, Banshees amongst others um, mm. have been kind of linked to sirens with, with basically their similarities, which obviously include the singing, um, you know, being around nature. Um, so, w- you know, woodland, mm. lakes, springs, that kind of thing. Um, and also luring people, you know, towards them. Obviously with Banshees, it was more to deliver a message um or to you know sort of curse them in some way, yeah. whereas with sirens it was to drown them, <laughs> if that's what just you, straight yeah, up, just to kill them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so but obviously as, you know as we've as we've seen in our research, you know fairies, you know, are, are, are mentioned with you know mermaids mm. and sirens. There's a belief that they are a, a sort of part of the fae, which kind of led us onto this path originally. Kind of makes sense, um, really. Anyway, um, and it's um, yeah the main. Uh, just before we move on, I guess, the main difference I found um, between sirens and, and mermaids, aside from the obvious physical look originally, mm. um, is that sirens uh, are usually depicted as evil temptresses um, that lure sailors to their deaths, whilst mermaids are usually depicted as peaceful, non-violent creatures um, that try to live their lives away from human interference now somewhere, yeah. and that was the original, I think, intention. But what was, you know, as we found out, somewhere along the line, that was kind of 
morphed morphed and mm. mangled and and sort of changed to essentially mean that there is no difference that sirens and mermaids are one of the same one of the same mm. basically um it's quite interesting it's, really yeah no it is definitely it's um because i yeah I, I went into it again the same you know th- you know the mermaids were like you know the um i don't know like the disney you know iteration gotcha. yeah. and then sirens were the more kind of dark violent horrific sort of iteration the, the duality that yeah. was mermaids and sirens good and evil type yeah. thing that's that was kind of my um understanding but yeah it seems that they are certainly from their origins mm. um which hopefully we've conveyed um, that they are very much, very much different. Well, the f- the one thing that I did find was was a, a few of the the more ancient Greek stories with regards to what they were. Um, so this right, one okay. was um, there was a, a competition between the sirens and the muses. Oh yeah, I read that. Yeah. yeah so one legend says that Hera, the queen of the gods. Um, persuaded the sirens to enter a singing contest with the muses. Yeah. The muses won the competition, obviously, yep. because they are the muses. Because they are, but yeah. And um and then for punishment, the sirens had all of their pl- their feathers plucked. Yeah. S- seems a bit unfair, really, you know. Set to fail and they were punished regardless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is brilliant. And then um crowns were made out of the feathers and the muses wore those crowns. Yes. Um so out of their anguish from losing the competitions, the sirens turned white, fell into the sea, um, f- completely featherless, <laughs> where they formed the islands in the bay that is now called Luke, um, which means the white ones in modern Suda, which is a oh, okay. which is a, a small bay um, on the coast of Crete. Oh right, okay, so okay, so staying within, Greece staying within, then, yeah. yeah, staying within the Greece. Um, there was also the Argonautica. So Jason yeah, and the absolutely. Argonauts, yeah, yeah. Um, which was the third century BC. That's right. And Jason had been warned by Chiron that Orpheus would be necessary for his journey. That's right. Um, and when Jason and the Argonauts were passing the island said to be inhabited by the Sirens, yeah. Orpheus drew out his lyre and played a song more beautiful than the Sirens could sing, drowning out their voices. Mm. Um, one of the crew, however... Um, the sharp-eared hero Brutus, or Bootus, even, mm. um, heard the song and leapt into the sea. But he's all right. Yeah, he was all right. He was end, all right because luckily. he got caught up by Aphrodite. Yeah. Well done, mate. She was knocking about and yeah, yeah got caught, she got, he got caught by her instead. So <laughs> you yeah. you, He's got to knock about quite a lot back then. Yeah, exactly. Know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there was no, uh, yeah, there was certainly no missing about. But the interesting one as to why we may not actually see them anymore, um, where... Um, where mortals could actually pass them without hearing them. That's right. Comes from Homer's Odyssey uh, with Odysseus. Um, Odysseus was curious as to what the sirens sang to him. Mm. Um, And so on the advice of Circa, which was the, um, another goddess, um, uh, the goddess of witchcraft. In fact, Um, he had all of his sailors plug their ears with beeswax and tied him to the mast. Yeah. So he ordered these men to leave him there, tightly tied up, no matter what he did, yeah. no matter what he said. This bit always reminds me of Tropic Thunder, Jack Black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's a hilarious film. Could never be made today. Are you joking? I'm, no. sure, I'm surprised it still gets shown today. Yeah, to we're honest. supposed to be a unit. Yeah. Shock my unit. <laughs> Robert Dowdy Jr. is oh, brilliant in that. Yeah, superb. So yeah, back to back to Homer. And uh, Odysseus. Do, do. <laughs> I can't. I can't <laughs> I do it. I know, right? You can't. Yeah. It's it's I can't take that name serious no. anymore. No. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Cheers, Matt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, when he heard the beautiful song, he ordered the sailors to untie him, uh, but obviously they couldn't hear him because they no, had their ears plugged. Luckily, yep. um, So when they uh, they passed out of earshot, Odysseus demonstrated uh, with his frowns to be released. So he's like, yeah. look at it, fucking rage me now. He was ranting oh, and I'm done quiet. We're yeah. past it. Yeah. Um, done it now. Yeah. Uh, some post Homeric authors state that the sirens were fated to die if someone heard their singing and escaped them. And that after Odysseus passed them, therefore flung themselves into the water and perished. So potentially that's mm. maybe why. Because the, they were cursed and that curse was sort of and they've gone from scene sort of thing, wasn't it? From you know, because we all know that fish and birds are one of the same thing as well. I guess I don't know. 
Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> so when a bird jumps into the water, it becomes a fish. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, they so they were ahead of their time in some respects, the Greeks. But yeah, they yeah. In others, not so much. No, no, definitely not. Um, yeah, so that's um, I guess that's a little bit on the um, the sirens. Um, I suppose now we can yeah jump into the uh, the nymphs really yeah, and, the and nymphs. kind of how they. Um, sort of insert themselves into uh, again greek mythology um now they're typically depicted as a nature deity so you know they they're often referred to as personifications of nature um they can be attached to a particular landform or a place that they can represent so literally anything nature so water Mm. vegetation sky space fire anything anything that's that's nature they can yeah. be seen this was to represent l- it or this was so it. much more detailed wasn't it i found yes. this to be so much more detailed there was literally yeah. hundreds so much. of different nymphs with their own names oh, that ridiculous. were localized to a stream within a town yeah. or a tree that lived in someone's back garden and it had yeah. a name and it it's each like, nymph had its own name its own like purpose it served a different god it, it had its, yeah it was just nuts like it was probably 40 to 50 i think different certainly from the list i saw anyway you know oh yeah different, I, I found a much ones, bigger list than that yeah yeah because that because the one that was because it, it it condensed it down to the various different types that's right so yeah. um <laughs> a bit of, bit of identity politics going on in the nymph world yeah um, i think so yeah, <laughs> yeah. so th- there was like all these various different ones that had their own individual names and then they were grouped together within uh, slightly smaller groups of what they were attributed to and then right. a much larger group where they had their own group name that's um, right yeah so i you initially found five was it or four I found four initially, um, and I'm going to absolutely butcher these. Um, <laughs> so apologies for uh, pronunciation. Um, but the, is it Meli? Yeah, Meli. Me- Meli um, are the tree nymphs or ash tree nymphs, yes. to be specific. Um, Nallards and, and, or Nallards um, were freshwater nymphs. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, near reeds. Um, were sea nymphs mm. and oreads uh, were mountain nymphs. Yeah, and then with each of those four, you then had well, yeah, countless, I've got, countless well, I've got like like dry, versions. A dryad was a tree nymph, so that's just right. just trees in general. Then it, yep. then it broke it down to uh, hammer dryad, which was an oak tree, the melii or melii, which was for the ash trees yep. as well. So that that gives you an idea that it starts off with one grouping and then splits off into several yeah, different, different other trees or groupings. Yeah, different streams or lakes you know as yeah you said yeah there's um a sylph which was a nymph of the air right so okay. i guess they can't be localized no i suppose not oh, no, it's, gonna, that one's it's pretty just, generic just flitting about yeah just an, an air one, <laughs> air one. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's um I, I found a um epimelid 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 even, which is a nymph who protects flocks so I guess that could yeah, also be a, another type of sylph. Or so specific, yeah. Uh, yeah, this got so... It's nuts, yeah. Yeah, it could get monotonous if we went through If we went through every, every single, single one. one, we could be here for quite some time, just given the names and their purpose and the god that they served or the the, the hero that they served. Because mm. um, again, it, it wasn't just the big guys like you know Hades and, and Zeus and whatever. It was some of the sort of the Greek heroes from mythology mm. also had their own nymph. Like, like, like a local king as well and, and stuff yeah, like that. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, local yeah. legend or... Yeah, so we could go through that and bore you to death and not bring you quality content. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what we do here, as you <laughs> all know. So we uh, we'll save you that. What, well, quality content or... <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that up to the <laughs> listeners to decide. <laughs> not for me to say. Well, yeah, we, we do try, we do try. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, in Now, in Greek, um, the word nymph um, simply means young woman. Mm. Um, but can also mean young wife or bride, um, which I think was similar to mermaids, wasn't it? What 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 yeah, mermaid water, meant was water same maid. thing, wasn't it? Yeah, water maiden. Um, yeah. Nymphs are only female. Um, there is no male version, um, which I think if you go by all the reboots that are going on at the moment, 
it's pretty much going along the same lines, isn't I it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are usually the size of humans, um, unlike fairies, which are a lot smaller. And I mentioned that because, again, nymphs were specifically kind of um, included um, within the fae. That's right. More so yeah. than sirens were. And I think that's because of their 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 presence well, and their, phys their physical being as opposed to what sirens were and kind of is now. Um, so, yes, that's why I mentioned that um, mm. they are considered a divine spirit with nature. So they don't necessarily take the physical form of a human female, but it will be it will be a female spirit. And then depending yeah, it'll be feminine, on feminine, wouldn't it? Or feminine, yeah. Mm. And then depending on where depending on where they they're seen or depending on what purpose they're given, they then take on a, a sort of an appearance or part of their appearance then relates to yeah, sort of exactly that. So if, yeah, if they're found around like vegetation, like, they'll um, have vines around them. Yeah. Or if they're found, yeah, um around sort of water, um, then they'll their skin will be a certain colour mm. or, or that kind of thing. So it's the manifest manifestation of their own energy sort of thing. Yes, yeah, basically that, yeah, which is, again is why they were more um, sort of classified as um, as, as fae for, for those reasons. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it, really, that, that nymph is maybe the much, much older word that eventually turned into fae. I didn't find anything mm. on that, no. but from what I've found with regards to... The, the 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 folklore and the mythology surrounding nymphs is yeah. just that it's very very similar to that of the fae mm. um less child snatching i must say <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah less of that yeah um it was yeah it was more i think their their sort of manifestation you know as you say i think he's more to kind of protect or to to kind of to guide mm. you know nymphs aren't really seen to yeah to really kind of interact that much with humans mm. they're kind of just you know there so if you're a farmer and you're you know tending to your herd you you'll see the protection nymph just yeah. kind of like you know floating about or just appearing and then disappearing and you know so that would kind of be their their sort of purpose so they're more just to yeah guide mm. protect you know that kind of thing you, your hooter all right you're, you're having a bit of trouble <laughs> I'm try I'm holding back a sneeze at the moment. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. That's why I keep touching my nose. I'm like, oh, don't do it, don't do well, it. We can edit it out, so it's going to happen. Do which we leave a bit of silence so you can sneeze and I can cut it out, or <laughs> we'll do a clap. <laughs> we'll do a clap. <laughs> yeah. We'll just use the sneeze as the next, yeah. as the trigger. Yeah, you cough when I sneeze. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as, as I say, in Greek mythology, uh, it was often shown, or they, it was often believed that. Um, the nymphs were lovers of gods and the heroes of uh, mythology, or sometimes even their mothers. Um, hopefully, they didn't get the two mixed up. <laughs> yeah, but with any luck. <laughs> yeah, with any luck, yeah. You can only hope. Um, now, I thought I'd just make a note of a couple of um, a couple of the more sort of famous um, uh, Greek uh, sort of gods that were believed to have had a, a nymph kind of okay, serve yeah. them. Um, yeah, uh, Thetis, who was the mother of Achilles, um, was also a nymph. Yes, which which I didn't know again until you know, kind of reading this. Um, and that's like when he was when he was blessed in the waters. Yeah, they he they held his ankles. Yeah, um, and that's why you know you've got the Achilles heel. Yes, um, because of how he was held. At, yeah, because that was the only bit yeah. that didn't get blessed by the water was where he was being touched. Yeah, so if you've got a yeah, the saw Achilles, then that's why, because it wasn't blessed or whatever, In if you believe all that. And then old Paris of Troy had a really lucky shot, didn't they? A very lucky shot, didn't he, just? Lucky yeah. bugger. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, another one involves um, Hephaestus, uh, who was um, banished or, or sort of tossed from Olympus. Um, and, yeah, basically sort of crashed down to Earth, landing somewhere in, in Greece. Mm. Uh, I did find the region, but... Um, yeah, it escaped you. Didn't, didn't write it down. <laughs> okay. To be honest, um, and so Thetis, so the, the mother of Achilles, and another uh, nymph basically tended to him uh, and nursed him back to health, which um, didn't go down too well with uh, with Zeus. No. Um, yeah, who was uh, 
somewhat annoyed <laughs> that, uh, that she'd done that. Oh, Zeus can be a bit, bit of a dude. He, he? Well, a bit of a diva, I yeah. think, is probably more the... <laughs> <laughs> it could be a bit, bit of a diva, bless him. Uh, yeah. Just you wait, you'll be smited down as soon as you walk out now. As, Yeah, as soon as I step out, yeah. Fuck you calling a diva. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Um, but you know, one thing I did find really, really interesting and quite yeah. funny about the nymphs is actually their origin story. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, go on then. Here yep. we go. <laughs> so nymphs were first uh, mentioned in ancient Greek texts after the mutilation of Uranus. <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse you. <laughs> well, I saw that film. <laughs> Didn't say whose it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the mutilation of Uranus, yep. um, which as we know means heavens. Of course, um, that's, that's what we all thought. Uranus was the son and consort, uh, consort of Gaia, which is a bit weird. Okay. So Gaia created him and was also, a, you know, he was her consort. Um, his dominion was supposed to be restricted to the heavens, but he became presumptuous and intruded on Gaia's earthly domain. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Man. You know, you need a bit yeah. of space. It's my turf, so. Um, so she <laughs> in, induced her titan son, Kronos, to attack Uranus with a sickle made of flint. He mutilate, <laughs> mutilated <laughs> Uranus <laughs> by cutting off his member. <laughs> Yeah, I can see how, how that would work. I <laughs> Shouldn't that be it? <laughs> Shouldn't that be it? He might have lost it Gore. in a smelting accident. <laughs> it was a key the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the Melii um, were created from the blood of Uranus. <laughs> as, <laughs> as a guy absorbed it. As you do? Yeah, yeah. so um, there's obviously a reason why I pronounced it in such a way. I was going to say, are you saying it like that on purpose yeah. oh, of course because that's this correct pronunciation <laughs> that, that is correct yes. of course yep you are right <laughs> so um we then next encounter the nymphs in the war of the titans yeah a bitter 10-year war between the titan gods and their children after mutilating his father chronos became uh, the nominal leader of the titans as well as the older less powerful immortals in many respects he was just as oppressive and overbearing as uranus <laughs> Sorry, I, can't. I couldn't. You can't hold it, I can you? Yeah. Kronos' son, Zeus, rallied the disenfranchised immortals and asked them to fight against the Titans. All of the nymphs came to Zeus's assistance. Yep. From that time onward, nymphs have been called the daughters of Zeus, even though he was not actually their father. So, they came from somewhere else, man. They did. Yeah, and that was, I, I mean, I they came I, from Uranus. They, they did, as all bad things do. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, my goodness. I'm sure, we've all met a few overpowering Uranuses, haven't we? I've do, yes, they certainly have. <laughs> so name, I feel there's an origin for them as well. Can name a few. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Again, we haven't got time. So. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. So, yeah, nymphs are assumed. Assumed the form of young, beautiful women with a loving and supportive nature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is yeah. always nice. And they have been consorts of the immortals and even taken mortal men as their lovers and companions. Mm. The children of the nymphs have lived lives as poets, soldiers, and ordinary men and women. The role of nymphs has generally been quite passive, yeah. but there are instances where they become vengeful and assertive. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um yeah, it's just um, there's a couple of other little um, stories. One that actually again um, involves uh, Jason and the Argonauts. They um, yeah, so they also had uh, another encounter. Um, so I'm not entirely sure they had sort of a good run of it. And oh right. I guess if you've seen the film, then yeah, they did. Uh, I know they fought off a load of skeletons. Up. Yeah, I remember that bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great bit. That. Um, but yeah, basically not all. Obviously, following on from what you were saying as well, it's. Um, obviously not believed that all nymphs were, you know, kind of helpful and pure. Um, as we said at the, the start of the episode, some were also considered dangerous. Mm. And in the story of um, Jason and, and the Argonauts, um, for anyone that doesn't know, it was basically a group of heroes embark on a quest to find the Golden Fleece. Um, their ship arrives in a place called Messia, and uh, one of the heroes... Uh, guy called Hylus or Hillus um he leaves the ship in search of uh, fresh water and uh the nymphs are 
attracted by his uh, be beauty and lure him away and abduct him. And uh, he was never seen again. Right. By the rest of the uh, rest of the crew. So we oh, can only... So there uh, we go. There's an abduction there. Yeah. So we can only imagine what, uh, what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Lucky bugger. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I know, right? Um, another one that I found, um, a Sicilian um, herdsman um, named Daphnis pledged his... Uh, pretty sure that's how you say it. I I'm guessing not. Um, I've suffered from that a few times. <laughs> a bit of Daphnis. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, fucking, haven't we all, yeah? Um, he uh, pledged his loyalty to a nymph um, but was then tricked into becoming the lover of a princess instead. Right. Hard life. Mm -hmm. I, d I don't think it took much tricking, no. to be fair. <laughs> um, the betrayed nymph, um, obviously found out, wasn't too best pleased, and uh, she either blinded or killed Daphnis uh, in just pure revenge. Right. Basically, just because she straight could. Straight up. Yeah, just straight up. Yeah, that it there's conflicting info as to which one it was. So whether he was blinded and then killed or it was one or the other, I, it, I couldn't really see anything sort of concrete. But um, it was, yeah, uh, another example of, um, yeah, You're how they're not naughty. always quite nice and helpful and kind of protecting they can be Again, vengeful. It's very yeah. much along the same lines as the Fae. Yeah, they? They are exactly right. Usually, yeah. you know, these peaceful little creatures the, the that run around in the woods. Yeah, that we covered it like as well. It yeah. all seems to come from one one origin or, you know, mm. kind of one one source. Um yeah, th they were the th the only thing I guess worth mentioning because it's come up quite a lot in uh, recent um episodes was that uh, a nymph was also believed to be an advisor to the woodland god Pan. Oh, yes. So oh, um, EO Pan, Here yeah, he is. absolutely. So either he had a uh, an advisor or, or mentor. That's right. Uh, or a sort of little harpy knocking about, and uh, yeah. she would serve. She would serve him. He'd be the the the, uh, the the spider's web sort of thing. Yeah, like the little info to come from across the land. Yeah, yeah it was basically. Um, yeah, who was it? It was well. It was another um, another Greek god that would walk alongside Pan. As well, um, oh, I remember reading it, but I didn't write it down, did I? Something <laughs> bollocks, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> good work, good work. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, I remember reading that as well, and it's it's interesting that Pan comes up in that as well. Yeah, exactly. It's just yes, it's one of those things, you know. If you know, it's like when you see, you know, if you, a, a particular car or something that you're buying, mm. you see it once, and then you don't stop seeing it. You know, yeah. it's the same with Pan. I'd never really heard of him before. And then, you know, as soon as the, you know, the NAC guys, you know, sort of mentioned him briefly, and then obviously he comes up quite a lot in Helia. Mm. It's now you just, you see him mentioned everywhere in places that you wouldn't necessarily, mm. you know, sort of expect it. And it's just one of those things. He, and it's, it's interesting. Cropping well, up I suppose now. it kind of makes sense because Pan does mean everything. It li yeah. That literally does what, that's exactly what and that these means. these nymphs are seen supposedly everywhere where there is nature. Mm. And that's where he is also um, kind of attributed. So yeah, now it's one of the things that now you know it makes sense. But yeah. Initially, you look at it, you think, oh, he's popped up again, or yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> just one of those. Yeah, Mate, he's popped up. Yeah, yeah, can't get rid of him. Um, <laughs> I did find um, a siren encounter. Oh, okay. Um, that I was going to just go. If you got anything you want to cover, quick. Well, I did. I did actually come across a water nymph encounter i I searched oh, okay. high and low yeah same. for anything and i found one thing right from 2018 um same yeah it's not the same one is it <laughs> i bloody well hope not <laughs> this this one pops up in the geezer's dining room oh right no okay no, yeah, no, no, that's no, all right no. no that's fine you go through right. yours first and then i'll jump right, on okay. with mine <laughs> i'll um apologize in advance because it's, it's quite a lengthy story and i found it on a reddit submission um, oh, okay. And basically didn't want to sit and write the whole thing out word for word. So I'm actually going to read it from my phone. Go for it. So um, apologies in advance. Um, but this was around uh, July 2018. Um, the, the 
poster um, was on a trip to Goa, India with uh, some friends. And they were on a, a rented yacht in the Arabian Sea slash Indian Ocean uh, mm. for the night. Um, a lot of them were drunk as hell, um, except the poster. Um, he had stayed away from a drink that day because of a bet with one of his friends. Basically, he was bet $20 that he couldn't go for two vacation days without drinking or smoking. So for that reason, he was trying to sort of win the uh, the bet. Sounds like his mate is a bit of a prick. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bet you to have no fun. Y- yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, yeah, it's just for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for you and you alone, yeah. yeah. However. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, but early on in the night, um, some of his more intoxicated friends decided to look out at the vast sea and they yelled excitedly um, that they had seen mermaids around the boat which turned out to be Dugons. 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 Dugons, yeah. Uh, manatees. Ma- oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah all man- right, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Dugon so, is another name for a manatee, yeah. Right, gotcha. Okay, so yeah, so it turned out to be um, manatees, which are uh, believed to be sort of common in that area. So they thought nothing of it once someone had pissed on their parade. Mm. Um, Columbus. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, this was at around... Um, Oh, sorry, out around 11.30 or 12 at night, um, he helped get them all back inside um, and basically to bed, I guess. The party had died down by by this point. Mm. Um, Around 2, 3 a.m., he decided to enjoy the view of the sea um, with a a late-night snack. Um, He decided to be specific, and it was a packet of barbecue Lay's crisps oh. or chips he's american oh i see um <laughs> typical isn't it um <laughs> <laughs> typical shaking your head like mad exactly. there. Like, you, you the, very the much crisps. disapprove of that crisps and it's crisps. football not soccer so <laughs> gets right on my goat <laughs> so boil your piss does it, it? the boils my piss yeah but i digress <laughs> um he was about halfway through the uh, pack when he noticed uh, a strange human-like figure coming up out of the water. Now, <laughs> assuming that they were actually mermaids seen by his drunk friends, he decided to take a closer look. So uh, they formed uh, what he thought was a circle around the boat and were gradually drawing closer. Um, now, he could tell that they had long, uh, dark hair. Um, it was a bright moonlit sky so that's that's how he could tell mm. uh, and that they had grayish white faces uh, they did not rise very far above the water uh, he could only see their shoulders or you know down to their shoulders at most mm. um, he was still assuming that they were somewhat ugly mermaids in poor lighting and tried waving to them at which point they all simultaneously stared at him in uh, you know in the one direction they began to emit what I now feel was the most ghastly wailing I'd ever heard. It was oddly mesmerising, and as I inched closer to the railing, I felt a strong urge to join them in the water, but I started to back away uh, when I saw their eyes. They had no irises or any whites of their eyes, just plain black. Their mouths seemed to grow in size, and that was when my eyes convinced my ears (laughs) not to give in. I dropped um, my chips and pulled away from the railing and fought my urges to jump over. And I ran inside, shutting the door behind me and falling to the ground. Everyone else was asleep and the wailing just abruptly stopped. I I was far too afraid to go back outside at this point. So (laughs) I decided to lose the bet and have a fairly good amount (laughs) of of henny and rum. uh, plus, <laughs> plus half a blunt that my friends had left. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. If, yeah, if you're going to lose a bit, do it, do in it style. properly. Yeah. Uh, he passed out, and uh, the next morning, um, no one was missing, so that was good. His words. <laughs> um, no one believed me though, and we had to head back to the hotel that afternoon. Interesting. And that was the. Um, and that was the. That was the encounter. Um, black eyes as well, though. Yeah, greyish-white skin, long dark hair. Yeah. 
black eyes black eyes solid black eyes even oh. in even in the moonlit sky there was like no sort of you know no reflection nothing they're just dead black that's interesting which was because um, that's like the um yeah. like the the eyes of the pt barnum mermaid yes they were yeah, black yeah. and it and presumably i mean it was a black and white photo but mm. presumably it was similar sort of colors yeah to that as well yeah, you'd believe so. Yeah, so very that weird. Was, yeah, I did find, as we discussed before, I did find uh, a few other bits on um, on on yeah, Reddit. Yeah, but you they, found one that they, turned out to be a, a creepy pasta. It actually turned out to be a story <laughs> as opposed to an actual uh, sighting, um, which was still cool to read. But yeah, I sort of yeah. discounted it fairly quickly once I'd realised. That's an interesting that it was, one though. But that's that's yeah. creepy though. Like mm. the, the, the mouths elongate and yeah, then just start wailing. Yeah. Ugh. Which is yeah, it's quite. And when you're you're high and you're drunk, it's going to be amplified, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that well, but well, supposedly he was sober. Well, he was. Yeah. At the point of the sighting, he was. So. Cool. But he initially discounted it because his drunk friends had seen them, and he thought nothing of it. But then when he saw it, obviously he had no excuse to kind of yeah, be sod hallucinating that. or you know whatever it might be. So. Yeah, God, I would not want to yeah. be the the only one to be seeing that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. As well. Yeah. But it must be so alienating. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I found I found a, a water nymph encounter, um, right. which was written by a gentleman by the name of Clive, okay. and again it was in two thousand and eighteen. Um, doesn't disclose the location. I did try and find the location as to where this Clive tends to operate, yeah. but um, it's an interesting one because it seems like this guy has gone on a spiritual journey right. as well, and uh, he, he states about six months after my waking up. Um, during a visit by my friend Joan, we found that I had a water spirit, also known as a water sprite or water nymph, um, in my dining room, which is an interesting okay. place to find yeah, one. Yeah. So most of the time, we would find her in one place, although she was not exclusively stationed there. We think that there must have been an underground water hole entrance at this point um, because we could not see her spending much time away from water. Um, which kind of makes sense, really. Mm. She interacted with me for more than six months from when I first became aware of her. She would often merge my energies with <laughs> her energies with mine um, if I spent any time in one place in the dining room. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So this is, I'm not quite sure exactly whether or not he sees it or he just feels it. I don't know. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, how has it merged? Like, what's the the feeling with that yeah, yeah. Well, this is what he says he goes when this happened i would find myself undulating gently like the ripples of a stream mm -hmm. what comes to mind there is something like yeah. squidward yeah. you know where he does the squidward <laughs> yeah. dance does the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> undulating like ripples yeah, yeah. In, a, in a pond it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> this seemed by by her way of saying hello right so okay. you know, again a bit of a weird one um uh, it took me a while to get used to her presence and as I was very visual, as this was a very visual period during this time. I'm not quite sure what that means. Yeah. Um, and it was quite a shock at times to walk into my dining room and see what I, in the first instance, thought was a woman standing in the corner of the dining room. So Which, he would, yeah. He would, would see her. Kind of stacks up, yeah. Yeah, especially early in the morning when it was not when I was not quite awake. Um, she was of medium height and looked like a person made of water. She was many shades of deep green and blue and constantly undulating as though water flowed within her. She also had longish watery hair and a woman's face, hence the she. But as we know, yeah. the nymphs are often referred to as she because there doesn't seem to be any male ones. No, no there isn't. No. So even now, many years later, I miss her presence. To a certain extent, it felt as if this interaction was both uh, part of an unfolding edu education. Mm. She learning things while visiting the human's abode as I from her presence. A year before her appearance, I had retiled the kitchen floor. I was very creative in the house and I laid three colours of vinyl tile to create the design that represented the contours of a lake when looked at from above. Okay. In hindsight... He thinks that this lake cut from the floor tiles actually beckoned the water spirit to come out. Right. Um, when making that uh, that water exit part out of, so the way he made the the floor look that 
the exit was going toward the door right. into the dining room. Um, yeah, so the sculptured tile lake flowed the full length of the kitchen but narrowed as to a channel as it came up against the door leading to the dining room. When making the water exit part, I had been surprised that I'd finished it in that way with the open flow as it felt better than it being completely enclosed. Yeah. So it seemed to me that he was unknowingly planning for this encounter before it actually happened. So almost like a, a synchronicity yeah. sort of thing. Okay. This outflow through the kitchen door was exactly oriented to where she would eventually appear and stood over a year later, which was right in front of the dining room alcove storage and shelving unit. Um, I can post a link to this so you can see the pictures that this guy has posted. Yeah, so it be quite interesting. He themed his kitchen around water. He used driftwood in yeah. different places, handmade cabinets, again from Wasn't it a, boats. I don't know if it was this was your theory or whether it, it said it in there, but didn't you say it was because he made kitchen furniture out of driftwood yeah. by a, and a an nearby old lake, that that was the kind of the... Well, the that's draw. what I thought as well. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. That he used this drift water and he used um, uh, the cabinets and various different water plants as well. Mm. Um, but the cabinets themselves came from an old boat. Right. So, again... It's it, time in the water. It could have... It could have, have... attracted itself. Yeah, it could have, like... Attached itself attached to it. it. Yeah, it could have attached yeah. itself to it and, and brought itself into his kitchen. Yeah. Um, but, yeah... I don't quite know what to to make of that one. I don't know. It it it, it doesn't seem like it's the, the typical kind of fantastical sighting or overly dramatic or, you know, it seems quite placid, quite calm. It doesn't seem to come from just from you know hearing it. Doesn't seem to come from a place where you would ma you would make something no like that up. Well, I don't know. I there's did just, a little bit something of, about it. I mean, seems... I did a little bit of digging into Clive. Um, and it, it, it turns out that he is uh, a spiritual healer. So he does a lot of okay. work with like crystals and very new age. Right. So very, very new to age. believe that sort of stuff anyway so, and practice yeah. it. Which and I think, uh, like, very much like myself, mm. you know, I'm very much inclined to believe those sort of things as well. Yeah. Um, through various different experiences that I've had. Um, but it was, I've, I've watered down no pun intended, um, <laughs> some of the, <laughs> some of the, the new age language that, that he's got that in he there. used right yeah. okay and uh, i couldn't like i said i couldn't quite ascertain his location or anything like that but it's, it's stateside at the very least oh it's stateside yeah right okay fair enough yeah i don't know there's just yeah i, I, I don't know i mean I, I don't know if i'm you know getting soft in my old age or what but it, it there's there's something the way it's the way it's written, it's very mundane, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's almost like it's quite boring for an encounter. So it's like, well, if you're going to make something like that up, you'd at least add in a bit of pizzazz, a bit of drama, and yeah. something to kind of hook the reader. But that's quite, you know, like a Sunday morning. Oh, I got up, walked into my kitchen, and oh yeah, I saw, you know, there's a what nymph. Yeah, and the, and he but he was very particular about how he decorated the kitchen, the way it was all laid out, and so it's like, well, okay, did you do that specifically to attract something? Some or sort did of doing like spirit that or, attract something? Or did, yeah, or in doing that, did you, mm. you know, attract well, it, it something? It seems like, because he does say in hindsight, he thinks that doing the, the tiles on the floor in that particular way to make it look like a, a lake from up mm. above may have attracted it. Because he did that a good year before he first noticed. Or, or I'd be more inclined to think that it was using the driftwood or, or parts of yeah. the boat that actually brought the nymph into his home because she, you know she may have attached herself to one or the other it's that but then idea. the way he did the tile to replicate the water was what kept her there possibly because she thought that that's she had possibly. something to kind of but that's the, that goes along with the the same idea that the items can be possessed by various yeah. different spirits or as or, it's believed or... in paranormal we've just yeah just ghosts you know it's believed that they or, which or, is, or it's known that they can attach themselves. Yeah, which is to interesting because if, if that's able, if if ghosts uh, yeah. are able to do that, then these various different spirit creatures, like mm. nymphs, can do such, the same. Which should yeah. technically be able to do the same. Yeah, um, and therefore, by extension, demons as well, because you know we've well, exactly, we've watched yeah. the Conjuring universe and all of that sort of thing. So it's. You know, all about well, spoil, spoiler alert. I actually haven't. Well, you haven't. I've never seen the Conjuring universe. You haven't. Yeah, I always I thought haven't. you have. No, never. Oh, never. you should. 
Well, I've got a project now for October. Yeah, you obviously do. Obviously, with it being uh, <laughs> all Hallowsy. All Hallowsy. But, um, Sawain. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I actually, I actually haven't. Oh, I actually okay. Haven't. And I don't know why I haven't because that's. You're not really into the, the spooky, like paranormal stuff, though. For for a long time, were you? Not as such. No, I. I mean, I love you know, like horror. Yeah. And, and and that kind of thing, but it, yeah, it's I suppose it's a different kind of horror. I, I guess although they're not in any way linked, I I think the thing that put me off was um, the paranormal activity. Oh, okay. Because it's all that kind the of actual film possession. Paranormal activity. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah the film's gotcha. paranormal activity because of the whole like sort of you know possession and poltergeist type thing. And they're pony. Them films, they're awful. Yeah, they're really yeah. bad. The, the, well, the first one was good because it would never seen anything like it. Because you've not like seen it, it before, but then the others are just dragging it, yeah, dragging it out big time. And so I'd sort of attributed my feelings on that to ah. the country because the country, obviously, is you know is you reality. judged a book by its cover, didn't you? Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Yeah, I mean, with good reason because <laughs> you know they are also about you know possessions, and, yeah, you know paranormal and, and that kind of thing. And I just was like, oh, you know. I don't have much time now to watch kind no. of films and stuff. So if I'm going to dive into a film or a series of films, I need to at least have that that draw to want to watch them. So that that's yeah. yeah. No, I'll I know we've I know we've digressed, but yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of my um my feeling. That's why I've not watched them. But no, I've I've got a project. Uh, yes, you do, especially for, for this uh, the season no. to be spooky. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But no, as you as you were rightly saying, you know, if 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 it's believed that that ghosts and or you know spirits you know human manifestation you know in the beyond can you know mm. attach themselves to things or to people you know sort of inanimate objects that kind of thing then you know if nymphs are believed to be spiritual beings then why can't they you know as you as you write so why yeah. why can't you know demons you know I'm, I'm starting to sort of think maybe now harking back to our first episode um mm. on bigfoot you know why yeah. are they always seen in overgrown you know sort of woodland you know big trees creeks are they a um a, like, a nature well, there is, there being is like a forest spirit sort of thing yeah that is one of the theories that some yeah. of the more new age bigfoot hunters come up with yeah is that bigfoot is a nature spirit a nature being a nature spirit and yeah. is that why that they're always seen in that you know sort of scenario is it why they can seemingly disappear you know quite you know sort of quickly or take mm. on different forms because you know it, almost every bigfoot sighting has got a different almost different way of how they you know kind of look or appear or in mm. terms of height and you know what you know whatever else well, so, there are some there are some uh fairly comical ones oh where, there are some great where it ones, just seems like bigfoot anything. is a bit of a moron yeah it's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a div um <laughs> to, to put it politely so yes yeah, so, i mean again you know it, it and again, like with everything else that we've covered, we, you know, within the Fae, mm. you know, the fairies themselves, you know, the goblins and gnomes and whatever, you know, are they all kind of one of the same, you know, one being mm. or, or one kind of spiritual force? And they just take on these different manifestations or, you know, sort of personas that have been seen, you know, sort of throughout our history, depending on, you know, the culture, the environment, you know, or, or kind of where they are. Yeah. And, but Wild well knows who decided on the, on that's how they're going to look. Yeah, who's, yeah. This who's is... the puppet master? <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> One sick puppy. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. It. That's what's um, <laughs> you know, that's what's got my attention. Yeah. You know. Um, but uh, but yeah, I guess we're um, inadvertently getting off the fence. We are, yeah. Technically, we? yeah. Guess, you know. Um, wasn't deliberate, but I guess we've kind of... You've got nothing we, to... Um, we always seem to do this, don't we? We always seem to do it. Yeah. We always set out a little segment for us to get off the fence. We always get off we always the just fence naturally well before. bleed into it. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, in fairness, like you and I spoke during the week, I think we'd pretty much come off the fence during our research. Mm. Um, but have you got anything else that you need or want to cover before we... No, no, no. I, I think, I, to be honest, I think, um, I, I, I think it seems like the more and more we, re we research these various different... Um, creatures with like are they elementals or spirits mm. or nymphs fae yeah they all do seem to be one of the same sort of thing and there does seem to be again this this sense of duality with them yeah, where exactly there yeah. is 
this um the the support and comfort side of things and then there's this you know and all of a sudden people are being abducted mm. by it so it's it it just all seems to be connected it, in it does, some yeah. way I and mean, that's how we've been led down you know this path from you know starting off with you know sort of one mm-hmm. cryptid and we've followed a, a seemingly natural path of interconnecting cryptids and creatures and spirits yeah. and so the, 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 the question of is it all connected is a very very simple answer but the explanation of the answer is incredibly complicated no. And I think it's way beyond me to even attempt to try and oh yeah explain definitely. it because it just seems like yeah there are connections but I can't explain those connections like no. where it does and and it goes on to beyond just no. these subjects and goes exactly, on to yeah. more modern phenomena absolutely yeah with you know alien abductions and 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 stuff like this yeah so it's, just a different uh, manifestation yeah that's what it seems to be yeah. but how that actually works can't, yeah well, even that, start. that that bit is yeah for people um you know far greater and smarter than us to you know try and get to the bottom of um you know we're just doing the you know we're, we're just bringing the, the cryptids and the, the creatures to the forefront and we're just doing god's work doing god's work <laughs> <laughs> don't shoot the messengers this house <laughs> is clean <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> I like that. Where did that come from? <laughs> I watched Ace Ventura a couple yeah. of weekends ago. That's what that is. This house is cleansed. <laughs> That's scarily accurate. Oh, no, I know, right? That's good. He's good, yeah. I watched um, When Nature Calls. Brilliant. Uh, the second one, isn't it? Yeah, it was on. With all the guana. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the white bat. <laughs> the white bat. Yeah, that was on last night. Yeah, <laughs> started watching it. Yeah, excellent. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's yeah, I think because we've done obviously the two, um, you know, the two cryptids in, in this one, and I think one is is possibly more likely than you know than the other. I think mm. you know, Sorens with you know started off very much kind of just mythological. Um, and then they their you know their origin was kind of changed or stamped out you mm. know to come to what we now believe are you know sort of mermaids so i think they started off with quite a, a mythical origin but then were given more of a real world representation when like i say mermaids and sirens were kind of you know amalgamated yeah. to be one of the same whereas with nymphs again a very mythological um origin certainly from you know from what we could find but there seems to be a more kind of human and spiritual connection, mm. much like we, we've with the Fae and with the, the the Banshee as well, in terms of kind of where they're seen, when they're seen, what they represent, or, or how they manifest themselves. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I suppose I'm still quite you know sort of firmly on the fence. I sort of I kind of believe on, in in one and the possibility of 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 one um, from a, a sort of from a, a spiritual um, and, and I guess more religious kind of standpoint with, you know, with the nymphs and, mm. and how they have, have come to be. Um, and, you know, with the sirens, if it was based just on, on them, um, then probably not so much. Yeah, but but, it's, it's, it's but a tale it's that's the, lost into obscurity. Sort of yeah, thing. exactly. But I, and I think it's around the time that that law was, was kind of changed or, or, or butchered or whatever into then becoming what we now know as mermaids and having the whole good and evil thing. So you've got the good mermaids and the evil sirens. That, yeah. That's kind of where my belief probably more is kind well, of directed initi- to. That is that initially respect. what I thought was the case. Yeah. I, that's what I thought it was. I thought there was that duality where mm. the mermaids were the, the peaceful uh, sea creature sort of things and the sirens were those that mm. wanted to lure people to them de- to their deaths. Yeah, that's because that's what we've been sort of led to yeah. believe since... Well, yeah, I mean, I guess since you know Christianity sort of took it over and said, no, no, this is this is what you're going to believe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not that pagan rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, again, Mrs. Boucher got exactly, out of her yeah. seat and she came and told you otherwise. Yeah, you ain't played no foosball. <laughs> <laughs> foosball was never. <laughs> but Medulla oblongata. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mama said. <laughs> Got all them teeth and no toothbrush. <laughs> 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 but 
But yeah, I, I think um, I, I'm with you on that. Actually, yeah, it's it seems like for me that that if you were to just go with the siren sort of thing, mm. then it is just a tale that's that's been lost yeah. over time. Um, Mostly because of the lack of literary um, yeah. sort of descriptions early on. It was all in the Greek arts or the you know the paintings, the sculptures. But it's even even else. then though that it seems like the the ancient Greeks gave um, an explanation as to why possibly mm. yeah. they went from the, being these uh, bird women things into yeah. being these fish women things. Yeah, um, and that in a way sort of makes sense as to why we haven't heard of sirens of the ancient Greek type in literature since then. Yeah, because it, it's they've already offered up an explanation. Yeah, definitely. Um, which is convenient. Yeah, handy. Uh, yeah. Very, very yeah, handy, yeah. and thank you very much for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. as for the the nymphs, yeah, I could see that being something that is certainly could exist alongside us. Mm. That, and we we kind of we, we we touched on it briefly when we first started going into the nymphs about them having been very very much localized. To yes. like a tree within a town that yeah. you know it's got a very specific name, mm. and it makes sense really because we're the same as that, really. Yeah. And you know, it, it's we are all localized to our own areas. We've all got our own individual names and everything. Yeah, exactly, We've all got yeah. our own various different skill sets and, mm. and such. So, why would that not be the same for a, a, another creature of a yeah. different type? Exactly. That, yeah. Because we all believe in a different you know god or you know representation you know in yeah. terms of religion and the nymphs did that as well they served a different god depending on what their purpose was or what their you know sort of belief was or where in the world they were found so mm. if we can be like that then there's nothing to say that yeah. others others can't be like that yeah it's true uh, i guess is the um yeah i guess the summary for for sort of the yeah uh, i think i think you're right part, really i mean i think yeah so i think we've kind of stayed on the fence with it a little bit but a little bit yeah i mean I, I, yeah still sort of i'd say f still firmly on the fence i i, I guess there's a connection fair, with but, it all but i'd, I'd be more if, if i was to make a you know a, a snap decision i guess i'd be more I'd, I'd go on the believe side but i would be um not skeptical but i'd be uh sort of reluctant to maybe just jump straight over onto yeah onto that. but, I but think it's what we found as you know as you rightly say it was you know it's what we found from the other you know cryptids and other things that we've looked into that mm. kind of helps me with that kind of possible you know belief again if you were just to look at, at one thing in particular then you'd be like well no it's it's just mythology it's but just yeah, it's the culmination of all the different things yeah then it's the links to the other things that we've looked at and, yeah. and the other you know sort of cryptids and the similarities that i think is kind of why i'm more on the i suppose it's, it comes side. down to i mean unless you had a background in these various different spiritual terms and ceremonies and, and such that that would be your way of being able to interact with these sort of creatures you know i, I think about um <laughs> to talk about Helia, mm. you know, with the, when they did the invocation of Pan, you know, how <coughs> they were supposed to do these various different things to evoke the, the spirit of Pan and to bring him into their, their circle. Yeah. That, That's right. And you know, how we discussed that potentially they, they may have done it incorrectly, you know, mm. there might have not been the right intention yeah, that's right, yeah. behind it. I think if more people practised those sorts of uh, techniques mm. um, and and ceremonies and, and, and such, then we would be able to have a more definite answer on things like fey and nymphs and all those sort of things because we've got no sort of real... You and I have got no sort of uh, reference for how uh, Clive described that energy melding with his own, apart no. from, you know... Wiggling back and forth like, <laughs> yeah, like, like Squidward, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. this I can, but that's other than it being a physical sort of thing, we've got no real sort of reference for it. So, no. I suppose it would be the only way we could really understand it was if we had someone that could actually put those feelings into language for us. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and gives us a way of maybe even noticing because it's a potential that. 
they're around us all the time and they're interacting with us but we can't notice it because we don't know that sensation yeah we don't know that form of language yeah it's fair you know so again yeah, going back sense. to hell yeah you know there was a form of language that dana was having to communicate with when yeah. she did the god helmet and mm. the estes method combo with connor yeah that's right where she basically had to learn another language in order to communicate with whatever it was that they whatever were communicating was, yeah. with. so i suppose it makes us makes the same sort of sense that if we were say for you and i to go out for a hunt on a, for a nymph or something like that yeah we'd have to learn that language and be no, no fluent how to within use it. it yeah know how to interpret it yeah yeah um, which but usually i think it's setting the intention and i think if more if more people you know sort of did that and practiced those methods then i think this wouldn't be so uncommon you know and i think mm. a lot of minds would be you know would be changed it does seem like that that's on on the rise though there it does seem yeah. to be this um though were the the new ages they call it an awakening yeah exactly yeah, so yeah. it's it, it kind of makes sense and based on it does yeah based on uh their interpretations of and explanations of what an awakening is it seems like almost like maybe i'm on my way to yeah waking to it all yeah which is interesting that's cool um because yeah. uh, we've, we've discussed it i've we i've have, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, I've felt and seen things in in yeah. the house that you know like shadow people and stuff like this and mm. you know it's like when I woke up that morning, it was standing there in in between me curtains, yeah. and I just told it to fuck off. Yeah. It was like four <laughs> yeah. thirty in the morning. I'm like, I can't be bothered with you. Fuck off. <laughs> and then it was gone. I just didn't feel that that little sense of anxiety or that little tingle. Yeah, that's what they say you have to do, isn't it? If if it's uh, unwanted, you know, sort of like, spirit or presence, you would meant to tell it to go away and leave you alone. Yeah. Maybe maybe not so eloquently with- as you put it, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's certainly the. You get yeah, it's that's me Essex coming out there. Exactly. Again, <laughs> that's uh, setting an intention. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And, sort of like, like, and and from what I've read as well, if you're dealing with stuff like that, you avoid yourself of all emotion mm. as well, because it seems like, for instance, like the the more negative ones, they want to feed off of negative emotion. Yeah. So you know, with the you know fear or anger and mm. you know those or anxiety, those things that these these things seem to feed off of it attached of energy it. yeah exactly yeah it's just any energy i imagine if it's like super positive energy then they can attach to you know to that as well um well if those if, are the ones you want about if, then if isn't they're it? the ones yeah if, if you can so mm-hmm. yeah because I, I guess if you can if they can attach to negative energy then there must be a, a formal of positive energy that they can also attach to. it just never seems to be the case does it which mm. i think again sets the intention of what type of spirit you've got yeah if that's what it I suppose yeah, if attaches a to, happy so. little hobgoblin, you know, feeds off yeah. of positive energy, I want them about. Well, exactly. Yeah, you got you a little dobby knocking about, knocking her out, all out sprightly and chipper. You know, that's the sort of <laughs> that's the sort of one you want, not some yeah. creepy fucking shadow figure that's some creepy standing shadow in the doorway bastard. or something. Yeah, bastard. <laughs> the swine. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that's us off yeah. off the, the fence. I think for. Yeah, we no, kind of digressed part. a little bit there, Digressed didn't we? a couple of times a little bit, but uh, yeah, hopefully um, hopefully you've stuck with us and found this one uh, sort of entertaining. Um, and as always, you know, we'd like to know what side of the fence you're on. Yeah. You know, yeah, what, a, what do you think? Um, get in touch with know. us on the socials. Um, obviously, it's the Cryptid Ramblers podcast handle. On, on pretty much all of them. On every yeah. one of them. We've got Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. We're on yeah. YouTube as well. Yep. Um, obviously the likes there. and subscribes yeah. on YouTube it doesn't mean a whole much anymore with YouTube but we would still appreciate it still appreciate it, it yeah yeah, just, so. um, yeah exactly that just like and, and subscribe and if you do want to sort of follow um, there's a notification button as well that you can click to Indeed. get the uh, yeah notifications when we drop the new uh, the new content all, all is uh, all is helpful and, uh, and much appreciated yeah so um, also there's other ways you can support us so obviously Callum mentioned at the beginning of the episode the Patreon. Um, yeah, you can jump on Patreon. You can support us for as little as four pound a month. You um, can. Um, but we've also got the merch store as well. We have. Um, we are running the merch store um, in its current form for a little while longer. We are yeah. putting plans in place to move it over to something a little bit more local for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, with it having a lot more efficacy as well. Yes. Surrounding <laughs> yeah. it. 
um, yeah, and it absolutely. being all home brewed stuff, so stuff made here in the UK, yeah, um, and absolutely. more locally within South End, yeah, not far from where we're sitting right now, in yeah. fact. So, uh, so yeah. that should be pretty good. That'd be really good, yeah. Supporting yeah. sort of local business, getting you know better quality, better delivery. So um, yeah, we're just waiting for that to all sort of kick off. But yeah. um, keep your yeah. eyes and ears open for that one, guys. Yeah, absolutely. But also as well, another huge thank you to Hellfire Studios absolutely, um, yeah. for for homing us again on another yeah. Sunday morning. Yep, and don't guys. forget about that um, discount code, guys. Um, go to hellfirestudio.uk and use code CRYPTID to get 20% off yep. of all your podcast, video, and photography services. Absolutely. So yeah. It's definitely definitely worth it. Indeed. Right, so it's a, a goodbye from me. And it is goodbye from me. And remember, stay classy, all you ramblers out there. <laughs> Very good. Very <laughs> good.